what's going on guys got this thing here I've had it for probably six or seven years it is the 29 gallon air compressor from Harbor Freight which is basically their biggest air compressor that is uh, on that will run on 110 volts so um, I didn't really feel like I needed to have that much air or basically it just came down to it's it's kind of a pain to have to run 220 uh, I do have one welder that runs on 220, but I uh, I just went with this. It's rated at um, at 90 psi. It's rated 5.9 cubic feet per minute, and at 90 psi, which is what most people are going to be running at least, uh, it's rated at I think 5.9 cubic feet per minute. Yeah, it's definitely 5.9 cubic feet per minute, which you know isn't all that great, but it is. It is a lot quieter. I had a an oilless compressor, and originally, and this is much much quieter. It has its two horsepower motor. I really don't use it all that much. Is I just use it for mainly put airing up tires. Now it come with these two gauges and this adjustable regulator, which I usually just leave it wide open because I don't really use air tools anymore but I just use it for airing up tires. But I did put this extra valve in because I like to cut this off because if you leave your line hooked up, it just kind of bleeds down. And I also put this extra connector. Um, that was before, before that I had two reels. So this one line runs up here, all the way up here to this one reel. So I bought the Harbor Freight reel. I want to say this is the eight inch line or something like that. And this is quarter inch line. This is a smaller line, but the quarter inch line maybe it may not have as much volume, but it sure is a lot smaller and lighter. It just pulls out a lot easier, and it's easier to manage. So I usually leave the lighter line for like airing up tires or stuff like that, smaller stuff. And then on the other one, I'll run I'll run air tools and stuff on. But it really doesn't matter. It's not that whole that much difference. So it's just basically one into the other. And I always want to cut off the air because if I leave it on, this tank will probably bleed down because these, these fittings in these hose reels are going to just leak a little bit. or There's always a little leak somewhere that you can't find. Now I do really like, this is the Harbor Freight 50 foot hose reel. It's this 3 8 inch hose reel. But you know, you pull it out and it clicks like this. You know, and, and sometimes it's like you're getting in a spot and it doesn't want to lock or whatever. It's kind of a pain, but it is nice when you reel it in because you can just you can just let it reel back in. And then this one is just the old school style, but it's nice because you never have to worry about you know it pulling back in on you. It just stops wherever you want. So I've got two two reels, I think, of 50 feet. So when I park a car in the yard and I want to go out you know, and, and pump up a trailer or a truck tire, that's that's the one that I'm gonna be using right there. But I really like this one for anything that I'm gonna pull out long so that I have so that I have the reach on it because you can pull it out and you can reel this in super fast. With this, you kinda have to walk it back in. I mean it's not too bad, but it's kind of I don't know, I guess I would say it's kind of gimmicky. But it's nice because you can walk it back in slower, but this one, as long as you've got everything lined up, and usually when I use the air hose, I'll put a rag on it, and as I reel it in, as I reel it in, I'll wipe it off because it's going to pick up little bits of dirt and junk, and it's nice just to keep things a little bit nicer. So a lot of times with this one, I'm going to pull a car in from the garage. I don't want it sticking out too much, but really good upgrade is to keep two you know if you've got one compressor keep two hose reels I mean it you you'd be surprised you're always changing these tools and they leak and they're kind of a fuss and when the when the line is pressurized like it is pressurized it takes quite a bit more force to take the tools off and this is the brand new Merlin the biggest one I want to say this thing was like 30 bucks and I just, I don't know, I just figured I'd pay the extra money I had a coupon. But it's got like massive. So we'll let it run down a little bit. You can hear the compressor kick off. But it's got quite a bit of volume. 
You see the tank is still over hung. size tank and really it doesn't pump up nearly as fast as I would have liked it to pump up but it works you know and that'll be it you know when I cut this off it'll hold enough pressure for me to last a while if it didn't have a leak in the tank and of course this one leaks right here on this fitting on the side and I pulled it out twice and I've got this little gunk that goes between the threads and this helps a lot but it still leaks just the tiniest amount and I'll if I go like if I fill this up and make sure that if I didn't forget to turn this off then this will usually about a month later it'll be about halfway down so it does have kind of a slow leak and the only upgrade I ever did to it was I changed the oil so after about an hour a couple hours of runtime I changed this oil to synthetic oil and I believe it's 30 weight I don't remember if I put in synthetic 30 weight or if I put in like 1030 or something like that I don't know it's been running for six years and it still looks mint but I'm just a home user I'm not using it every day but you know it does warm up just a little bit um, and I will say that um, I've been pretty happy with it I mean it runs on 110 that's the main thing it's the most capacity that you can get that will run on 110 so that's what I got but I would recommend you know going with the double because you're always ready to fill up tires. You're not looking for the thing somewhere. You know, and even if I needed to run another one, like on a, a short whip, like I have an extra whip laying around if I needed to use it for something, but I'm not. And then, you know, this is mainly for just blowing out stuff, blowing out engine bays or spark plug holes or something like that. Now that most everything is, you know, electronic, all Milwaukee impacts or, or um, ratchets, then there's really no... Not much use for the air compressor, not like it used to be. But let me check out this other air compressor I got. This is the other air compressor I bought. I probably had it about a year. I kind of bought it on a, uh, I had a coupon. I think it was 159. This is the two gallon instead of the uh, one gallon. And really all I have this for is it's in a different, it's in a different section of my garage. And basically I just use it to blow off little bits of stuff. And I did put I did put a valve on this one because anything without a valve, it seems like if you've got a hose hooked up to it, it's going to leak through this. It's going to leak somewhere. So you can see it's almost out of air. I haven't turned it on in a while. So make sure you always leave your air compressors off because if you leave your air compressors on, you can hear how quiet it is. If you leave an air compressor on and it gets a leak or blows a hose, it will sit there and run and run and run potentially burn your house down but you can see how much quieter it is and if you notice it was at 20 psi and look it's over it's over 100 psi already the only negative i would say is this only goes to 135 harbor freight makes something i want to say that goes up to 150 psi but it really comes up to pressure fast very fast, so much faster than the 29, but of course it's barely got any capacity. But it's so quiet, it's just so nice to be able to have a good little air pressure. I can be over here drilling, blow stuff off, or if I'm over here, I kind of have like a, a carburetor cleaning kit. I have my little jets, and you see I've got some carb pieces and whatnot in here, jet ski carbs from old jet skis that I don't have anymore. But you always pretty much need compressed air when you're cleaning carbs. I guess maybe you could get by with just using all 
carb cleaner and solvents. So I drill a little hole in my bench here. So I just keep this slid in so that way it's ready to go whenever I need it. I pull it straight out. I'll blow stuff off. And it's super quiet. And just make sure that it's off. And then I always turn this off so it holds this pressure. And this this one does not leak at all. This is just, I mean, for 150 bucks and to have the extra air at the other side of the shop, I felt like you know, I could run a hard line all the way at the other side of the garage to run the 29 gallon, but it's so loud. And when I just need a little bit of air, this is just so much more convenient. It's quieter. I'm not waking up the whole house. So I always make sure, you know, that it's off. And I cut this off. And um, that's, that's basically it. Those are the two compressors I have. I also have a Milwaukee M12 compressor. It kind of looks kind of looks like this flashlight thing but I don't even know where it is but it you know it will pump up a tire if you're on the road but but anyway I've got a I got one of these M18 top offs I'm going to attempt to do a review on it at some point so if you wouldn't mind liking it and maybe subscribe if, uh, you know, if this is something that you're interested in but I'll get to it eventually I'm still I'm still working on some welding videos you can see my hot mess work from the other day and messing around got my vent got my vent up here put that out the garage door but anyway thanks for hanging out bye